Generosity is our calling. It's evangelism. It's open-handedness. Generosity is action. Generosity is impact. Generosity is a blessing. Generosity is taking on the heart of our generous and giving God, the God who created us in his image, the God who gave us his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and we are lavished with his grace, the God who gives us his Holy Spirit to be with us till the very end of the age, the God who created his people through the work of his son, Jesus Christ, and gives the church to the world for their blessing as well. Paul quotes Jesus as saying that it's better to give than to receive. Jesus himself tells us, as you have freely received, freely give. And that's why this is one of our values as a church community, is that we are freely generous. And why in this campaign, this challenge that we are entering into, we're calling it Redeemer Gives, a generosity commitment. And so we want to be less motivated by a thermometer on the wall with the, the amount of money we need to raise at the top and that goes up as we give and more transformed inwardly as we trust Jesus more, as we believe his word even more, as we put our, our faith into practice by learning how to be a generous people. I've been involved with a number of capital campaigns over the years, and um, I've led a number of them as well. And when I was invited to lead this team in this campaign, we quickly realized that Redeemer Gives is much different. I love the, the fact that we're having a generosity campaign and not a capital campaign, um, because I, I don't think you can ever stop growing in generosity. It's, it's one of those things like your faith. The more you practice it, the more you realize you don't know. The more you give, the more you know you can give, and the more you know you're called to give. This is more than a capital campaign. It's an opportunity for us to be good stewards and to practice the radical hospitality that is one of our core values here at church. Our God is a great welcomer. From day one, as he's been building his church on earth, it has consisted of a family of people worshiping together, welcoming people into that community. It's amazing when I walk around here on Sunday, whether it's in the morning in our English services or in the afternoon in our international services, and then throughout the week as I see all of the things that God is doing through our church, welcoming people into this community. And so I am amazed when I see how God has generously blessed us with all of the means that we need to be able to do the work he is calling us to do here in Greensboro. We cannot have evangelism without giving our generosity. Our body needs food, our spiritual life we need a, a generosity. It's our key uh, moral key for our evangelism. Imagine what it would be to take the generosity that God has given us and to share it with others who we continue to welcome day by day into our family. That's what we want to do with this campaign. We want to follow in the steps of our Lord who has been wildly generous and wildly welcoming long before we have. We want our generosity to enable growth. We also want to direct our generosity towards sustaining everything we already have going on here at Redeemer and the people who are supporting it. We need to offer our staff better salary and benefits. We need to pay a full-time rector. We need to fully fund the ministries that we have here so they aren't spending time outside raising support for themselves. The Lord talks about bringing the entire tithe into the storehouse. It's this type of generosity which will really enable us to make these important moves. When this generosity becomes part of our DNA as a church, when we're just faithfully tithing, we're able to be sustainable. And then we'll be better equipped to grow and able to welcome more into our fold. When Luke and I first got married, our understanding was that always that we had an invitation to give 10%. And for us, that meant some went to the church, some went to different mission groups um, around the world. And a couple years ago, when Alan gave a sermon about generosity, it really challenged me to think more about that invitation that we had, that the invitation was really a 10% gift to our local church and that anything above and beyond that was an offering 
um, to the Lord and to his ministry and to the people that do his work. And so since then, um, in those past two years, we have tried to really gradually increase our tithe so that we can participate even more so in the local missions of Church of the Redeemer, while also still providing an offering to those important ministries that are doing other work in our community and around the world. And, you know, and transparently, that's something that, a goal that Luke and I are still working towards. And so we're excited about this generosity movement because it's just, again, another invitation to continue to be a part of God's work in our community. So it's tempting when we're talking about generosity to think only about our finances. And at the same time as we are called to be generous with our finances, God is also calling us to be generous with our time. You see, the Lord is at work here in Greensboro, North Carolina at Church of the Redeemer. And so what I would like for each and every one of us to consider is not only how we can financially contribute to this vision, but how we can be a part of what God is doing in Greensboro, North Carolina with our time, with our giftings, with our own contributions to the work that needs to be done here. So one thing people might know is that I often will make waffles at the Free Farmers Market or wherever I'm asked if you have a waffle need. Um, and then I've started uh, planting some of the plants here in the courtyard. Um, and I would just say that, so one, when I give people food um, and, and make them waffles, it like their joy is my joy. Um, and I really love the look on their face when they have that first bite. And that just makes me really happy. Um, and then a lot of the other things is, is it's, a, it's lots of fun to figure out a problem that I don't have the answer to. So I can't say that I'm an expert gardener, um, but I saw a need and just figured like, well, let's see how we can figure it out. As we want to commit to our tithing and our time, we also want to sacrificially give of our finances. We do have some specific capital improvements that I'd like to share with you. And we invite you to participate over the next three years to make pledges and gifts that will help us realize these goals. Our mortgage is currently at $1.3 million. So we're paying about $100,000 a year out of our operating budget to meet our mortgage debt. We want to retire that debt. Our front entrance, we want to create a beautiful front entrance and that'll cost about $150,000. We want to have fencing and radically improve the landscaping and that's going to be about $150,000 as well. We need to improve our farm infrastructure and that's going to cost about $75,000. Our site survey and architectural drawings of our long-term strategic master plan will cost about $50,000. The exterior of our grove, we need to do some painting and some staining, and that'll be $20,000. And we want to improve our signage, provide electricity to our garage bay, improve our children's ministry space, and that will cost $20,000. So all told, that brings us to a number that is just over $1.76 million. And we're looking to raise that as I mentioned before, over the course of the next three years. 100% of our staff, our vestry, and our campaign team have all committed to this Redeemer Gives campaign. And we invite you to join us. So here's the specific ask of our generosity commitment. We want you to consider three things. Um, and, and when we say these three things, we, we hope that this is a rallying cry for our church. In other words, this is us asking us. This is our family coming together and saying, who do we need to be? And so collectively, let us consider these three things. One, uh, our tithe. And that, that's the biblical standard of giving. The minimum standard of giving should be 10%. Uh, that's what the scripture commands us to do. And the average nationally is that the, the average Christian gives actually 2.5%. And what we found through our research here as well, 
That's true for us at Redeemer also, is that, uh, is that most of our individual givers or family units together are giving at about 2.5% of their income. And so imagine what it would be like, what we could do as the church, what we could be, how we could take care of our staff, how we could do the work of mission outside of these walls. If our budget tri over tripled from 2.5% um, up to 10% giving. And so we want you to consider what is your normal giving and what changes do we need to make in our lives in order to be able to be faithful in what Jesus has called us to uh, in our 10% tithe. The second thing we want you to consider is the specific needs of the church right now. There's this specific, it's normally called a capital campaign, and we're not, we're not using that same language, uh, but, uh, but a, uh, a call to meet the specific needs at this specific moment of the life of the church. We've got some debt we have to reduce. We've got some farm things we need to expand. We've got to, uh, we've got to take care of our property as well. We've got some things that we need to be able to move healthily into the next season of life. And so above our tithe, how, where can... Uh, where can you give to be able to help out these specific numbers as have been laid out for you? Then the third challenge, the third commitment that we're asking you to make as well is, uh, is where are you serving? Where, what about your time? Uh, how are you getting your hands dirty in this work? Where are you pouring into others uh, and the work of the church that you are committed to as well? Uh, and so this really isn't an choose A, B, or C. This is saying, how can we learn to be a generous, have a generous lifestyle? Uh, and so therefore, all three of these things, how do we take another step uh, in growing in these areas? And that's why we're calling it a generosity commitment. I don't think I've ever not been joyful about giving. I was astounded to learn um, after a few years of being a believer that giving is actually a gift, a spiritual gift. And I was like, woohoo, you know, that, that explains some of this, you know, why I, you know, I think one translation um, of the Bible talks about a, not a cheerful giver, but a hilarious giver. And, and I would be that way sometimes. And, um, and I think that finding joy in giving is a, is a learned art. And I, and I think that the more you give, the more you'll learn to love it. When I think about like, what generosity means for us at Redeemer and us as being members of Christ's body um, is that it's not just a one-time deal and that it's uh, not just one way, that we should always be sort of rolling around this cat toy of generosity, batting it around. If Here's a season where I can give more financially. Here's a season where I can give more time and talent. Um, and that you're constantly playing around with that, that it isn't just like a set it and forget it and um, you know, like it'll just get done. So instead um, that it's just living and breathing uh, a way that you uh, interact in the world. I feel like when we give, we have special glasses on or something that we're able to see even more clearly God's work in the world. And so I want that opportunity to see that. And so that's why I give and that's why it's exciting to give. And so when you hear all these voices entreating you, um, uh, asking you to seriously consider your, your part in this, what we pray is that you hear, you hear joy and that you hear invitation and that we really believe that it's better to give than to receive. And we're inviting you into a life of generosity that will bless you deeply just as you are able to bless others. And so friends, I join my voices with all those uh, uh, who have been on this video with you and that you'll hear uh, as in person here in church as well uh, to, to join us in this commitment, this Redeemer Gives, a generosity commitment as we seek to be people who follow after our giving God and the one who lavishes so much riches upon us and that we can be not a people of fear and scarcity, but a people, people of joyful generosity. We'd encourage you to prayerfully consider how you'd like to join us in committing to generosity through Redeemer Gifts. We'd also love to know what you decide on. These will be a tool for you to use to consider your commitment and will be helpful to us as we continue planning for the future too. We'll be collecting these commitment cards on Sunday, October the 30th at our Harvest Festival. You can fill one out online before then by visiting our Redeemer Gives webpage, or you can fill out one of these physical cards and bring it with you to the Harvest Festival. We can't wait to see what the Lord does as we commit to generosity with Him.